again, Miss Zane here and Organella. The teachers emailed me some questions that you had following the presentation and I'm going to do the best I can to answer them um, with the information that I have. First of all, I want to thank you for being so attentive to my Organella presentation. You had some really interesting and thoughtful questions, so I can tell you were really paying attention. So I'm going to group the questions kind of according to their the way that they are uh, asked and not necessarily by the room, the teacher's uh, questions. First of all, one of the questions was how do bones grow, veins grow, and eyes grow? Well, first of all, as your body grows, the organs in your body work together and they grow as well. Now, if you give your body nutritious food, exercise, a good amount of sleep, that's going to help those organs grow better. So you can help your organs to grow healthier by thinking about the things that you put into your body. How does our stomach mash up food? The stomach is a muscle and it squeezes and mixes and churns this food that you've already chewed up and in smaller pieces. And also the stomach has some um, enzymes, some things that it helps digest the food. So the food is looks like baby food by the time it leaves the stomach and goes into the small intestine. How does your heart beat and what makes it pump blood? Your heart is also a muscle. It's the strongest muscle in your body and what the heart does is it has blood that comes into the heart and it's pumped out of the heart so that's where you hear or you feel the the bump 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 that's the heart pumping and it pumps the blood to the lungs where it picks up oxygen and then the it also pumps the blood throughout the entire body your whole body every part of your body needs oxygen so the heart muscle has to be really strong after it's delivered the blood to all the parts of the body then it goes back to the heart to be sent back to the lungs to get more oxygen so it, your heart is always beating always pumping the blood how can we talk well when you talk you are passing air from your lungs past your vocal cords and that's how words are formed. Your brain, when you're a baby, your brain is soaking up all kinds of information. And after a while, you learn that words are associated with things and you start putting these in, this information goes into your brain and you start developing your, your vocabulary, the words that you use. So when the air passes past your vocal cords, you can actually feel this if you say the word buzz. Zzz. You can feel the vibration in your neck. That's where the vocal cords are. And the air that is passing by the vocal cords and your brain teach you to put the words together. Okay, how is our why is our spine shaped in circles? Well, the spine, as I told you before, if you feel, I can't show you your spine in Organella's body, but your spine, you can actually feel by taking your hand down the center of your back and you feel the bumps. The bumps that you're feeling are part of the bone structure that keeps you upright and but through the center 
of these bones, they're stacked one on top of the other. And what you're feeling are the little bumps that are closer to the surface. So what goes through the center of these stacked bones is the spinal cord. And the spinal cord is how you get the information from your brain to all the other parts of your body. So that's why it's shaped like a circle. The spinal cord, which is very important, is protected by the bones that it goes through. Just like your brain is protected by the skull, your spine, which is also very important, is protected by these bones so it doesn't get injured. Why is our brain the size it is and why does it have bumps? Well, let's take out Organella's brain and look at it. The brain does so many things. It does everything that's going on inside your body. And it's not very big compared to the rest of your body, but it does so many things. And so it's, it has different parts of it that do different jobs. For example, one part of your brain helps you speak. Another part of your brain helps you walk and move. Another part of your brain helps your organs continue to work on an on a hourly basis. Another part of your brain controls the things, your senses. You see, you hear, you smell, you taste, you feel. Those are all different things that are controlled by your brain. So your brain is kind of in different sections. And the fact that it has bumps on it makes those sections actually bigger in the space that they have. So there, the size of your brain is controlled by your skull, but the fact that it has bumps on it helps it do more work. What causes you to bleed? Okay. Another organ we haven't talked about is the skin. The skin is like a protective bag that we live in. So the skin helps keep the germs out and the moisture and, and liquid and blood and so forth that we need to survive inside. So when you uh, cut yourself, again, we talked about the blood goes to every part of your body. So when you cut yourself, you make a break in that bag that you live in and the blood is right there. Now you put pressure, first of all, you clean it, you put pressure on it, you put a band-aid on it, and after a while, the blood kind of dries up. And then your body gets to work and starts to heal that cut. So it's another really important way that our body is so cool. There aren't many machines that can actually heal themselves, but our bodies can. So another way that our bodies are really special. What happens to your organs when you run fast? Well, we know that your heart and your lungs are working harder. You can feel when you're running, you can feel your heart beating faster and you have to take deeper breaths and more breaths to keep up, but actually, all the organs work together, so they are also helping your body to uh, complete the job of running. For example, your eyes are connecting with your brain so you don't trip and fall. Your muscles are controlling your legs so you can run faster. So your body basically works, all the organs work together to help you do more work or run faster. Why are the organs in our stomach and not in other places? Well, we have organs throughout our body, in our head, um, in our, basically from here to um, where you sit down, you have, it's full of different kinds of organs. But we also have organs in our arms and legs. We have the skeletal system, the muscles, we have bones, we have, um, Nerves, nerves, so the nervous system. So you basically have organs like that in 
all the parts of your body. But with organella, since she is a doll, we just look at the organs that are in this area. So she is um, a model. She isn't exactly like you were built because there are other things that we can't show you that are in your body. But this helps you get an understanding of how some of the major organs in your body work. Can you really break your heart? Well, sometimes you can be so sad that you feel like your heart is breaking, but those are your emotions when you feel really, really sad. Your heart will continue to beat and pump blood when you're sleeping, when you're sad, when you're running, when you're doing schoolwork, so your heart will not break, but you will probably at some time or another feel very sad. What if we break a bone? Well, I have experience with that. I've broken a couple bones. And um, so first of all, I was taken to the hospital and they did an x-ray and they found out where the bone was broken and I went into surgery. They repaired the bones and then I w kept that part of my body, it was my wrist, I kept that part of my body quiet for several months, I didn't use it. And as it was healing, then I would go back and see the doctor and he would check on it to make sure it was healing properly. And over time, it healed. So that's another cool thing about your body is that if you break something, oftentimes, especially a bone, you can heal. You go to the doctor and they help you with the treatment that is necessary. How many organs are in the human body? Well, a lot. So, like when I was talking about the digestive system and we talked about how organs work together to do a job, let me just pull out the digestive system to show you. Okay, this is the digestive system. And these are several organs that work together. So in our body, we have 11 organ systems. This is just one of them. But in each system, there are several organs that work together to make, to do a particular job. All the muscles in our body are in the skeletal system, or are in the, yes, the skeletal system and the bones. So we have 11 organ systems in our body, but lots of organs help each system do its job. How many blood cells are in the human body? Also a lot. In fact, I had to look that up because I didn't know. Trillions. That means more than hundreds, thousands, millions, billions, trillions, a lot. So a lot of cells in the human body. Are things with natural sugar good for you? Absolutely. The things that have natural sugar are fruits. And um, so apples, oranges, bananas, all of those things with natural sugar are good for you because they have things other than sugar in them. The apples have other nutrients. The oranges have vitamin C and other things that your body needs. But the things that don't have nutrients in them are things like pop because there are no important things that your body needs in there and it's full of sugar, sugar that really isn't helpful because it's so much sugar. So natural sugars are definitely okay because they give you nutrients that your body needs.
I've tried to answer most of your questions. I haven't answered all of them because I don't know all the answers. And it's a fascinating, our bodies are very fascinating. And I suggest if it's something that you have questions about, maybe you can go to the library or look up on the internet if there's something that you're particularly interested in. Look up the answers in a library or online. Um, so I'm hopeful that this has helped you. Thank you again for inviting me back into your classroom.